Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hi guys, this is Matthew from the SDA Housing Podcast. I'm here with Min from the office and Rob from down south in Melbourne. And today we're talking about manufactured housing, uh, the unique product that our builder Elton Himes is doing down south. How are you doing, guys? They're great, Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome, yeah. Excellent. So first topic, um, obviously, what's the difference between traditional housing and manufactured housing? Well... Okay, traditional housing, everyone be aware, it's a standard build contract uh, with a builder that takes nine to 12 months to build the property. They're doing it all on site. 12 to 15 months now. Okay, 12 to 15 months, building all on site. So when you go and see a built-in home, you'll see the slab laid and you see the frame go up and you see the, the walls and the, and the, the bricks and then obviously the internals and then the house suspension. That does take... A, a significant time. So all done on site, all the labourers are there. Uh, payment from an investor is gradually through the build contract in stages, 5, 10, 15, 25, 50%. So that's the way probably 90, 95% of all builds uh, traditionally have been done. I've been done on this point, yeah. Now with new technologies and new ways of builds, uh, companies are looking at alternatives. So manufactured housing through Elton, they're not regarded as a builder. The actual houses are built in pods in the factory. So if you can picture the factory, a uh, big open factory in, in Durham and in Melbourne, you have on the floor six different pods for the diff six different parts of the house being manufactured. It only takes a week in the actual factory to complete. Then they're all put onto the back of you know, big, big semi-trailers, taken out to the site of where the land is, and then a crane will take those pods off the site, place them on the block after they've, they've done the, the footings, and they do it in a non-traditional way. They're not using so the standard waffle pod slabs. Mm -hmm. They're using a different, more, more advanced structure. Mm -hmm. They then literally put those pods together, a little bit like putting Lego together, yep. uh, and literally one or two weeks uh, process on when the site. house is on site. Yep, excellent, awesome. Now, um, this is different from modular and prefab. So, what's the yeah. difference? There? Yeah, so to a normal vessel, they'll think this is the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, um, under the uh, building regulations, modular and prefab, um, and you can talk about, think about caravan sites and mm -hmm. retirement villages where they put up these small um, little units. They're nowhere near the same level of build quality. The modular manufactured, sorry, manufactured homes are the equivalent, if not higher grade build quality to the traditional homes being built on site. That has a couple of significant advantages. One that Elton mentioned was in financing. Generally, when you build a modular house, so like a kit home, yep. you can only get 40 to 50% financing from, from the bank. Whereas with the manufactured option through Alton, it's considered exactly the same as the residential build option where you can obviously borrow 80 to 90 percent potentially through the, through the lender. From a fiscal point of view, the uh, modular homes are 450 millimetres off ground and these yes. are 150 millimetres off ground. Yeah. The modular ones, they would have slabs on them, right? They can, yeah. yeah. The, sometimes they have a slab, sometimes they use pillars and piers. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just depends on, on obviously the land and the system they're using. So is the word prefab part of this discussion or not really? Not with what we're doing through Elton. So, uh, so what is prefab versus? Well, prefab, prefab I guess, is, is when, you, when you think about that, you're just um, putting it together in a factory, prefabricated, but it's not to a, the same high quality. Yes. When it's a manufactured home with Elton, mm. 
the you think of it more like a commercial grade build yeah. in terms of quality. So it's full steel construction, yeah. prefab won't be. Yeah. Prefab might be timber or it might be uh, low grade cladding. Just a, a far lower uh, standard and grade of materials that are used in, in the property compared to the manufactured mm-hmm. housing option. So Matt, when we were there a month ago, all three of us, we were in the fact, factory floor. Yeah. You could tell there wasn't a cheap average build or so. Yeah, yeah. So all the materials seemed high quality. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I've, I haven't actually seen a modular, yeah. modular house, but um, I've just heard things. So. Yes. Um, but this is very hard. And you walked into the, the concept one in the car park, remember? That and one? it's it's very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. You put them together, six of them. Yeah. It, the finished product is very good. You couldn't tell the difference. At, uh, yeah. And what, what struck me when we walked into that finished product, particularly in Melbourne, and it was freezing that particular day, was the level of insulation mm-hmm. was really good. It yeah. wasn't losing any any heat uh, and getting any um, cool. As well as that with the steel frames, you're looking at it's a lot stronger as well. Yeah, it's right. wider frames as well. Yep, double insulation. Um, it was a robust house, obviously, but you know, I guess. Yeah, well, in this particular case, to give you an idea, just in terms of what we didn't realise, but now are very confident dealing with this, this particular manufacturer is that there's a, a lot of very high end uh, inclusions in the house as well. A two point seven metre ceilings. Uh, it's got ducted aircon throughout. Mm-hmm. It's zone control. You know, that, that's twenty thousand dollars extra compared to traditionally what we'd be looking at in the sector yeah. and for the average investment home. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're looking at putting in induction cooktops eventually as well. Uh, Euro- European appliances. Is- European appliances. Very high quality. Yep. Full steel construction. There's no timber at no, all no brick. in this house. No brick. No concrete. Mm-hmm. Uh, the walls are completely fully insulated mm-hmm. as well, which is what we talked about a minute ago in terms of it'll give better heating and cooling throughout the year, so it'll reduce costs in that regard as well. Absolutely. Fibre cement sheeting, they use thicker frames, thicker impact boards, particularly that's to do with robust. Yes. So the actual walls are stronger in case anyone wants to potentially do any damage. Yep. Uh, fully soundproofed mm-hmm. as well. That's so you just... can't hear anyone screaming uh, outside or, or any noise that's going to obviously come in. Come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, stone bench tops throughout. Full tiling as well, including the garage. And that's very unique. Yeah, that's unique. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no carpet, which people will, will find unusual, but that's specific to the robust house well, to can, avoid any issues. Can you explain to the listeners why full tiling for the garage? You have full tiling because if you had uh, a client who might have issues with self harm or doing harm to others or under a robust, Another breakout room. Yeah, or another breakout room. If if they've got the carpet flooring, potentially they can rip that up mm-hmm. and then use that as a weapon or, or use that to do yeah. harm. Yeah. But the garage, yep. to treat that garage as another meet as another breakout room to Yes. So it's an extra area if the if the car's not in there. Yes. And you know, usually with most builds, the garage is just the, the standard concrete floor. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. you're unusual to have it sealed or, or have it tiled. Yeah. Absolutely. But it works. Yeah, it works yeah. well. So the All design, the design and inclusions have been to put together with the builder and the SDA assessor to be certified. So lots of yes. SDI already for pre-certification or approval, subject to the approval of the house, obviously. And when the house is complete, it will be inspected and, and certified mm-hmm. again. Yes. So in terms of, uh, I suppose, the extra, extra secure, extra layer of security. Um, well, before we go, we talk about risks first. So what's, yeah. what's the risk of a normal builder versus the risk of this kind of manufactured house? And then go back to security after. So, yep. Risk, risk well, the, the, the topical risk at the minute is obviously the, the construction industry is struggling and right. costs of materials yep. are going up and they're continuing to going up. So the biggest risk here is time. Time risk, yep. And when we say time risk, what Elton are doing is that they're purchasing all the materials for the house, including all the, all the inclusions up front and then they sit in their uh, warehouse. Mm. So you haven't got time risk with waiting three months to get the materials and they could go up another 20 or 30 percent. So that actually gives Elton more security uh, going forward for their profitability because it's they, they know definitively what this house is going to cost 
Currently, with builders in Melbourne, they're doing fixed price contracts. They might have done them 18 months ago. Uh, it's currently now looking like it's costing them $100,000 extra per build, and that could go up even more in the next six months. And so that's, that's a huge risk. The rules of construction is you've got to have profitability. Correct. Otherwise, you shouldn't be trading. Yes, and a lot, a lot of them are, are doing builds at a loss, which, which doesn't make sense at the minute. I read an article in the um, Australian Financial Review that... The seventeen thousand, twenty, something, twenty or thirty thousand, seventy thousand. I don't know. The numbers are huge, right? Construction companies and builders in Australia, small to, to large, and half of them are not running a profit. They are, they are theoretically insolvent on this paper. Correct. And that's and, just, and that's just. And the other thing to bear in mind: the ones that are being prudent uh, to ensure their financial security going forward, and, and we've spoken to a few recently, are currently pausing doing any more sales mm. at the minute. They're, yes. they're actively yeah. not trying to yeah. do bills be, until they've got more certainty with costs going forward and that they know that they're going to be profitable. So it makes it hard mm. to find a builder mm. to build a home at the minute. And in, in the best case scenario, I feel like for a builder, if you're, you know, you've got a small margin and you might be moving forward and you might have to increase your costs, that's best case scenario, I suppose, for a builder to avoid going broke, mm. which obviously for the client, that's not a good, good thing. So in the news, on Facebook, all the, the big topic of conversation in Australia is, are these builders about to increase their prices midway through construction? Mm. It, it, it's happening anywhere. And it, they it, it, if they can. It, we hear the news, it's everywhere. It's every day, yes. somewhere. Will the builder survive? Poor mum and dad has bought a, bought a house, and then we get a 50 grand increase in price. Shopping stories. We have, and we understand both sides, and this is the reality of risk. The yep. time risk, finance risk, supply risk, yep. labor risk. Right, that's traditional. Now, over to manufactured housing, what are their risks? Well, they haven't got the same time risk as we talked about. Yes. They haven't got the supply risk that's fixed because they're buying the materials up front, mm-hmm. and the whole process from go to woe literally is. is not much more than a month, three months in total from the point your client might commit, yeah. but only a month in terms of the build quality. Mm-hmm. So the the risk is lower there. Uh, they still theoretically could get into financial trouble down the track if they mismanage the business, but they're not subject to those external the risks. Wind, they the window of time is so small that those big risks you're referring to are not, they're outside the window. Yeah, correct. Because construction time is really five or seven days in the factory. And then seven days delivery and on site. There's really a 14 day turnaround time to put it all together. Yeah. And the other thing that Elton had mentioned to us, being classed as a manufacturer rather than the builder, they've actually got uh, readier access to supply of all these materials than a builder has. So they can get the materials quicker at a better price than what a builder currently can, which is. Explain to our listeners why they have. They have that special relationship with supply. Why is that? I think it's just because they're classed as a manufacturer, not a not a retail builder. So they they've got different um, contracts and and um, supply chains in place that gives them priority access to those materials, such as the steel. As um, people are saying, they bring the commercial load into the residential. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in terms of contracts, I mean, how does how does what, 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 wait, risks? Extra layer security. Yeah. You mentioned before. Yeah. yeah. So following up on the topic of risk, yeah. What is these less, these layers of security that, 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 that was okay? Saying? What what investors will need to understand, and we'll, we'll make it perfectly clear when we're talking to you, is that it's not a standard build contract that you're signing here. It's actually a manufacturing agreement contract. Um, so the extra security is in the case where the house and land packages are being supplied together. The land that Elton are building on for the investor and then on selling it to them, they already own, fully unencumbered. So there's no first mortgage bank involved. So in order to buy the materials up front, Elton obviously need funds. Hmm. So you, you need a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar deposit. Not negotiable. Not negotiable for this particular bill to pay, pay for all the materials. Payable on signing. Yep, payable on signing. So an investor's going to think, okay, well, what's the risk? If I'm paying $250,000 up front without seeing anything back, what is the risk to me? What 
the contract allows for is that um, Elton give you the ability to apply a caveat over that particular block of land. And what does a caveat mean? A caveat is just a legal document where, where the client gets priority access if something goes wrong to the value of that land. So they can basically, through uh, a legal process, if it ever got to that, enforce the caveat in court and recover their $250,000 via the sale of the land. So in the land that we're talking about in these areas, it's probably worth four hundred, four hundred and fifty thousand. So you're essentially fully covered in the worst case scenario. You've also then got still the builder's warranty insurance. So traditional builders all have builder's warranty insurance of 6.6 years. This applies in this instance as well. So again, if there was issues with the build or the process, you can claim on that. And then as we um, touched on, you've also got the ability to go to the federal court and um, well, a, court. Enf- a court and enforce your, your rights there. So it's a legal right. That's Correct. Right. Yeah. So legal rights, caveat of the land, and insurable going building via builder's warranty. And as I mentioned, uh, even if they were to go to court, which takes months to deal with, right? Yeah. It's all going to be finished. Yeah, anyway. Built anyway. Yeah. yeah. Because you don't have that time risk. Exactly. So time risk there. Now that's that's the um the layer of risk there. Three layers of, of three layers of protection against those, those risks there. And moving on to mentioning con- contracts, yeah. yeah. How do how do contracts look yeah. in comparison to a regular build versus what we're doing with manufacturing? So normal normal build contracts would be a land contract and a build contract. Everyone's mm-hmm. everyone knows what they are, it's simple. By the way, build, the gates are building the house, they're, they're the two contracts. However, well, in this in this particular it's it's basically a, a um, manufacturing loan agreement contract. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to, for those of you who know, might know, I put the call. So it'll be the one contract, not the two. As we mentioned, it doesn't have stage payments incorporated into the contract. It has the 250000 up upfront. Uh, then the balance is paid uh, when, when it's built and on site. And you'll probably talk about how the uh, financier will hold back 15% of that final payment until all the certifications and, yeah. and documents are, are ticked off. So think of it. Certificate of Occupancy is by the council and the SDA certification by the NDIS. So once those two certificates are issued at the very end, will the funder, this particular funder, release the last 50% of the payment. So 250,000 250, first on signing, then probably two weeks later is the, is the um, uh, 85% less 250,000, that amount there, and the last part is the 15% payment. There are three payments there to this particular funder. It must, it must be noted that the banks don't do This is a very unique bill process mm-hmm. and it requires a very unique and different funding solution. You just can't go to the bank and ask for this kind of money for full payment in, in three weeks. It's not going to happen. But. No, correct. It, the, the structure is specific to this particular lender, which is specific to Alton. Yes. And also, the other thing we haven't mentioned is that Alton, being a manufacturer, is a wholesale. Supplier, mm. who have got an exclusive deal with you to be able to provide these to your clients. And they represent their, their parent company as well. Yeah. So, does that cover the contract? Oh, yeah. Also, there's two scenarios here when, when, when they own the land versus when they don't own the land. Yeah. Do you remember what the contract setup would be if, that, if, the, if a client brings the land? The land to pay? Well, they're still paying the 250 yeah. up front. Yeah. Uh, for the materials, and obviously it, it goes from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now talking to a couple of alternative uh, funders as well to come up with structures. So that's, you, you probably know better, but that's still to be part of the um, finalised script. So if any of our listeners have lots of land around Melbourne and Greater Melbourne, and they would like to explore the idea of robust only manufactured housing, then we definitely help out. No that's HBS, cool. no FA, fully accessible, yep. not, not that yet, but we. Six months, twelve months, seven months away from the top of there. But now it's only robust, and they must have lending approval with this particular lender we work with. You can't yeah, be so it transfers over. Yeah, it can't be another lender because at the end of the day, you've got to have a funder or a wholesale lender who will who will play by these rules of and understand these rules. Yeah. So we've dealt the last four months with one particular funder who agreed to it. No one else will agree to this. So we've got to have. So if you if you if you if you want to block a land in. Where it be with NAB, never refinance that over to this new lender. 
Plus have two fifty k cash. Plus have pre approval before we engage. You engage um, this manufacturer. That's yep. That's the rules of no negotiation because they they order everything so quickly and they build so quickly. They want, they want full payment up front. Mm. That's the way it is. Yeah. Correct. And might be worth touching on too the the type of land that they can build on based on our conversations with them. A couple of advantages over some of the traditional builders in the sector, there's a little bit more flexibility with the fall and, yeah. and fill on the land yes. uh, that will allow this particular home to be put on there compared to a traditional builder, so that's one tick. Also can potentially look down, look at knockdown rebuilds or infill mm. sites as well. Mm. Now, that obviously will be specific to the site, so for instance, it can be problematic if there's overhead power lines in a traditional area. Because remember, we were talking about bringing them in on yeah, sea yeah. trailers with cranes. The cranes, yeah. 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 So you're not going to do this on a main road or a, or a really busy street, but if it's a reasonably private street where you can access uh, the front of the block with a semi-trailer and a crane, and you can potentially go over the power lines mm-hmm. if there are some, mm-hmm. then this particular manufacturer will look at filling those blocks. And then obviously all the new blocks on the, the estates, perfectly fine. Uh Area-wise, they, they could theoretically do a wider area. Mm. It'll just cost a little bit more in terms of uh, trucking and transport costs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, insurance and warranty. So there's a traditional normal 12-month defects warranty and a 6.6-year mm. structural warranty as well. Mm. And they're allowed three weeks uh, once on site to, to get everything finalised and fix up little little um, issues with the home. Mm. Lockdown rebuilds. That was something that happened in the, um, the, the training session. Um, with them. Yep. So a traditional builder would require a year and a half to do knockdown rebuilds. We just have a pass, you know, you have yeah, the very the long top lady, is, yeah. permits and knockdown, remove it all and time management and all that kind of stuff. It's a year and a half. And it's costly. Yeah. Whereas doing it the Elton way, the Ventura housing way, five months to full completion. So that will do that will help assist using their software called cannot build to assess whether that site can be done. They'll do the lodge the permits to the knockdown. Yep. They'll lodge the permits for the BA and get it, get it all done, that extra fee, and build the house. So tell five months to do that compared to a year and a half traditional building. Yeah, and probably at a lower extra cost. So for those of you familiar with knockdown rebuilds, you probably need to budget at least $50,000 extra mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. for all the costs. Yeah. But when you think about it, because it's only literally a week, yeah, well, one of the biggest costs people would be frightened to know just having the stop go sign person at the front for when all the tradies come and they drop off the bricks traditional. That, that can be $20,000, 30000 dollars $50,000 extra yeah. over time. In this instance, you're only literally having that probably for a day mm-hmm. when the trucks initially get there. Uh, so it would significantly reduce the, the cost. Yeah. You know, the neighbours are probably going to be happier as well. They're not going to be waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning listening to a whole lot of those tradies. Yeah. Banging away on the house next door. It was six months or however long. Yeah, within a week, bang. Yeah. Done. So it's got a lot of potential advantages. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we want to be part of the robust rollout of products. Yeah. Because no one's really doing it, you know, and it's such a need with the current construction market. So, so much a need. Yeah. You know, speed to market is key because given the supply chain issues and lack of labourers and all, all the kind of stuff that are part of the whole. Challenges in the traditional construction industry. Yeah. Think about who, who's waiting for this. The participants they can't wait a year and a half. No, so it's much better. They want. Money. They want. They want to move now, right? So an example. Example. Of this is um. I. I. One of them. There's a civil provider I spoke to a few days ago. Seven days ago, she spoke to her support coordinators, and they definitely want these two first build something out there, out of the factory. Sorry, not out of there. Um, and the first one is. A one tenant for the house, one robust participant for the house, and that's two carers twenty four seven, and the SDA income is one twenty grand per year. Yeah, which is higher than we would we would ever uh, quote. We would normally quote um, fully uh, fully uh, two robust participants in the house out west in Melbourne is nine nine grand a year gross income. Here, one hundred twenty grand per year. Huge. Yeah. yeah. So there's massive demand for we keep on talking about robust, right? We have and we'll keep on banging on that door all the time to bring awareness to the community that the because of the lack of supply and all of it of robust NIL in building um products, this is the, the, the gap between demand and supply is growing 
growing every day, every month, mm. to do with all the charms of destruction, right? Yep. And um, but this had this house can also take three participants as IL. As yeah. Well. yeah. So that's your fallback, mm. and then your further fallback as an absolute worst case scenario is that for all intents and purposes, the, these Elton homes uh, look yeah, exactly like options. a normal home. So you can just rent it out on the traditional rental market. You don't have to do any refit or spend any money to convert it back to a residential property. Yeah, yeah. You might want, you maybe want to put a bit of park carpet in or put some um, you know, rugs or something on the floor. That's probably the only slight difference. So when we started talking start to this manufacturer seven, eight months ago, they didn't realise that their inclusion and specs were so identical, almost identical to a robot's home. Mm. It, it was just perfect use mm. it. And that's why the transition was, was very good to come over. And why they're focusing on that sector, yeah. essentially. So they really want to be part of the uh, affordable housing community and also the US community. And we're, we're leading the charge with them to bring awareness to our investors and, and other peers about this product. Um, which which is my, my is only wholesale, they're wholesale builder. Not, they're not a traditional retail no. business where it's not in their door. Hi, can we order a, a building? No, they don't do that. They build for their their parent company. So we're lucky enough to be able to work with them and buy through the whole process of of um, NDS or SDA investors. That's why we're we're the door there. Yeah. Um, Matt, any final words from your point of view as to um, whether you you know you talked a lot about in the front line of um, inquiries. What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, just I mean, the build time is so big. Uh, we've just got so many people who they're either shop built in disbelief that something can be built so quickly mm -hmm. um, and this is just uh, I mentioned it before it's just so needed it's particular at the moment mm -hmm. I mean you know going back a few years ago wouldn't have been that necessary maybe yes. but yes. it's just such an advantage and when we talk about speed to build it's also from an investor standpoint if you're making income earlier you know say you take a whole year versus a week or two mm -hmm. that's a whole year of income potentially yeah, so, so we bring that one up to our investors. Uh, the cost may be this price, 500 grand ish. Which is not much different to a traditional bill now as well, yeah. but it's, the gap's closed. You get a year of income, that's really 400 grand now. Correct. And that's quite a good in price of getting there. The certainty of product, certainty of participants moving straight away, and getting in before the, um, the CPI inflation. Revisions and the yes. price dimensions as well for that. Yep. Mm. Yeah, the great thing here is that we're helping people build the best home possible for their money that they've got available. So that's where we're giving them advice mm. on where based on their budget mm. in the shortest time possible now. Mm. And we're trying to ensure that they get the most income they can at the least risk of vacancy yes. going forward. Mm. So I think we're, we're different than that from our peers. Right, who sort of do what we do is that we are also very active in procuring participants to help out our housing providers we work with. Yes, absolutely. By networking with our supervisors. So, I mean, we're not the only company in Australia doing what we do, but I think we're unique in the fact that we're, we're actively out there in the community, uh, at the expos, at the events, at the workshops, um, webinars, we, we network, we meet the providers. We really act ourselves because we know that not every provider can guarantee participants, right? Mm. We can assure and the provider can assure of participants, mm. but we still got to have that plan B, and C, and D to fill the house up. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the key there because, um, I mean, Rob, the, uh, our question of these silver providers who are very busy. Yeah, very hard to get a hold of. Yes. Um, and hard to trust that they what they say they'll do they'll do but the more we're dealing with the less risk of any vacancies going forward and, and the more we network the, the stronger our relationships are getting it's not, it's not they're being rude it's, it's no just, it's, it's, they're just flat out yeah yeah you know um and then it's hard when our clients and investors say well show me that you've got the participants right mm. we can sort of show them verbally give them the, the assurances um, until we start borrowing out, uh, completing the houses in these areas in Melbourne and fully talented with these providers supporting us and we are showing the track record, which we start doing now, it, it takes time to win, win the trust of the silver providers and housing providers, that's for sure. 
Yeah. We are active out there, yeah. But yeah, so what any last words of advice? Uh, we, you know, regarding people considering traditional business manufacturing and, and what to come back today? I just just to obviously um, have, a, have a good thought about what we've talked about, what the advantages are. It may not be for everybody, but uh, I think that more and more it is a viable option going forward, and particularly in the current environment. Uh, just speak to us. We'll look at your individual situation and, and give you um, help on what we think is the best path for you to take. Yes. Yeah. The one last thing, Victoria. I mean, Greater Victoria. Victoria is quite a big, quite a large state. Yep. So the product can be shipped. Yeah, it can. Obviously, as we mentioned, it will cost more. So if you if you're um, going a couple hundred k's, and you're probably looking at another twenty thousand mm. dollars to ship it. But it does give us a wider scope of now where we can build because as we've discovered over the last year, we've been very frustrated mm-hmm. with. We've found it very hard to come up with appropriate builders in different regions. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's been really yeah. hard yeah. to to lock down. So now at least we've got this option that we could roll out pretty much everywhere where, where demand's needed. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for joining me and talking about Elton Homes and their unique product. Mm. Um, and we'll be in in future obviously discussing this more, but feel free to just give us a call or inquire. Send us an email if you want more information about this topic um, and we'll join you guys next time. Thank Thank you. you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.